Mesdames et Messieurs, bienvenue sur Africa 24. Dans ce présent numéro de décryptage, nous recevons pour vous M. James Ndungo Meru, vice-président de la Chambre de commerce et d'industrie du Kenya. Rencontré lors du Forum économique à Djibouti en décembre 2017, il revient dans cette interview sur les difficultés du secteur privé africain, mais aussi sur les opportunités d'investir dans son pays, le Kenya. Que pensez-vous de ce premier forum économique régional organisé par Djibouti Nous sommes ici à cette importante convention pour discuter des zones qui sont liées à l'intégration régionale. Et comme nous tous savons, l'intégration régionale signifie que la région grows together. Uh, and so a lot of the conversation that has been going on from yesterday relates to how the, re the countries within this region, within African continent, can collaborate more uh, so that they can make uh, the regional integration uh, concept uh, good for everyone in the region, uh, particularly with regard to the infrastructure. Because if good roads and rails uh, cut across the entire continent of Africa, then it will be very easy for trade to thrive and to go across the whole continent. So really what is being discussed here is how can we make this happen? And we are also looking at models of where it is working. For example, this morning we've had a relationship between Djibouti and Ethiopia in terms of regional integration and how... This is being spearheaded by the two governments. We also gave yesterday a case study of Kenya and the East African region and how we are spearheading that regional integration within the East African community. Que faut-il pour une intégration réelle en Afrique? The, the real integration is first of all to integrate our cultures, to understand the different cultures and to try and remove the barriers of trade through culture. And the second one is a physical infrastructure that can enable goods to travel from Cape Town to Cairo or from West Africa to East Africa in the shortest time possible and to be able to serve the entire population of the, of the continent uh, easily. Again, it is also important to realize that with, with proper integration and networks, we can build commercial quantities of uh, products to be able to export these efficiently through the various ports that we have within the continent of Africa. L'on parle de plus en plus d'un marché commun en Afrique. Croyez-vous en cela? I think it is it is not a far-fetched uh, dream. I mean, the common market uh, protocols that have been signed and the African com uh, continental free trade area is, uh, is is something that is being discussed and something that I know is practical. If you look at uh, the intra-Europe uh, trading figures, they run upwards of 62%. Now, if you look at the intra-Africa inter trade figures in Kenya, in, in, in Africa, we are looking at about between 12 and 16 percent. So we have a long way to go. And yet, that is the solution. That's about the only solution that we have to be able to grow this important uh, trading area where we say uh, we look at every country's competence and we say this country should now grow this product or grow this, develop this product for the entire continent market and this country should, and then that way you will find that the countries uh, that have, for example Zambia has a lot of copper, every country is using copper for its power uh, needs, so if Zambia concentrated on supplying the entire continent with copper and another country concentrated on agriculture, for example like in the East African region there is a lot of um, uh, agricultural land that can be used instead of commercial enterprises we look at how we can grow agriculture and so we look across the whole continent and share these goods rather than every country try to do everything within itself and for for very uh, 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 small quantities that don't have commercial uh, effect in the markets quelles sont les difficultés du secteur privé en Afrique I think the biggest problem we have is access to finance and that has been also stated here. Now what we are looking at is asking the World Bank and other international financial institutions to actually look at more uh, funding uh, to private sector. Now as long as the private sector is able to put projects together that are bankable, then the international community should be able to look at that. The other area that I know, because of the growing uh, Uh, competition within that financial sector is the private sector is becoming increasingly more innovative 
and you find uh, institutions like microfinance institutions are coming up. We are having uh, insurance companies coming up as financial alternatives. Est il facile d'investir au Kenya votre pays? Yes, now we have again as a country as Kenya, uh, we have moved from 136 position 136 in the world uh, by way of ease of doing business to position number 80 which is 50 places down. And we are hoping that because of the good collaboration between the private sector and the, uh, and the public sector, that we can bring this number to below 50 around the world. And for me, that, that goes along to say that the, the, the countries, the public sector and private sector are working together to make uh, doing business in Africa and in Kenya in particular easier every day. So we are, we are happy with what is going on. Of course, we also are cognizant of the fact that sometimes politics play too much in our continent and we are appealing to the political players to play within the political space and allow commercial activities and business to thrive with the rest of the space. Quel message avez-vous à l'endroit de la jeunesse africaine? I think the young men, the youth in this continent are, are still sleeping. My advice is they wake up. They come and play in their space because the space is available. And, and, and really, they, 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 a lot of them will fold their hands and complain that the government is doing nothing. But the government does nothing. They have to come and play along with the private sector and take their positions. They are the next generation. If they do nothing about it, the future will catch up with them. So they must wake up and take their rightful position. Et que faites-vous au niveau du Kenya pour accompagner cette jeunesse qui a tant besoin d'entreprendre uh, Our Chamber of Commerce, actually, in our board, the national board, we have actually a youth uh, committee and a women and gender committee that really looks after the youth affairs. Our national government has also set aside funds that are targeting the youth. And even in the tendering systems of the nation, there is a specific category of tenders that are set aside specifically for the youth or for the women or the persons with disability, which is a very proactive uh, position. However, it is up to the youth and the, and the persons with disability and the women to go out and take those tenders. Otherwise, if they are not taken, then the, 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 national, the, the natural kind of um, uh, effect takes place where the best tenderer then goes for that. So I think uh, what I've said is the youth must come out and take their rightful place in the, in the national development of the country and the continent. The youth must arise, they must stand up to be counted, they must remember that the future belongs to them and they are the real stakeholders in our continent.